In my second video of the night talking about Mark Hanna, I joked and said, who knows, maybe there'll be three videos. Maybe the Mets are going to sign somebody else. And the New York Mets sure did sign somebody else as they signed Starling Marte to a four-year, $78 million deal. In this video, I'm going to talk about Starling Marte, my thoughts, my reaction, and now the combination of Eduardo Escobar, Mark Hanna, and Starling Marte, all New York Metropolitans as of this evening. If you like this video talking about Starling Marte and making three videos, make sure to leave a like, comment down below. What do you think about Starling Marte? And what do you think about the three moves the Mets have made? And what other moves they have to make? And if you want to make doing the three videos worth it, you always can subscribe. It would be greatly appreciated. So I talked about in the Escobar video, which was two videos ago, that I thought he was a perfect fit for the Mets. Well, Starling Marte is a perfect, perfect fit for the Mets. Ever since Carlos Beltran left, the Mets have been looking for a two-way center fielder, a guy that has a good glove and has a good bat and can stay healthy. Starling Marte is all of the above. This is a guy that batted 310 this year, led the major leagues in stolen bases, and plays a very solid center field. Marte is also a perfect fit because he's a guy that doesn't strike out a lot. He struck out 99 times this year, which compared to some other players is really good nowadays. And the Mets desperately need something like that because how many times did we see where Nimmo gets on, even Lindor gets on, and then you see strikeout, strikeout, strikeout. And the Mets can't even move the runners over. They can't just get little runs here or there. Now that you've added a patient here like Mark Canna, RBI guy like Eduardo Escobar, and a guy that puts bat on ball, puts the ball in play, and does a strikeout in Starling Marte, this Mets offense is going to look a lot different and I think, based on paper, a lot better. Now, people have been saying that Eduardo Escobar is not a starting caliber player, even though the guy was all-star this year, could drive in 100 runs. I think Escobar will start the season at third base. Maybe there'll be a different third baseman by the time the year is over. And you could say that, you know, Mark Cannon and Eduardo Escobar, they're not top-tier free agents. Starling Marte is a tier one free agent. There were a ton of suitors looking at Starling Marte. Everybody wanted him. This was a very sought-out guy to get. And the New York Mets showed what they could finally do, spending that money, outbidding other teams and say, you want to get this guy? Well, we have the owner with the most money. We're going to spend it. I'm just very excited to see what Starling Marte could do in a Mets uniform. He's a guy I've wanted for a long time. I don't love the four-year aspect of it. He's not going to play center field when he's 37 years old, I would imagine. And he might not even start in center field. Who knows? Maybe the Mets will keep Nimmo in center field. You never know. Nimmo definitely shows some improvements in center field, but a lot of it is because he plays deep. At least Starling Marte could play a little more shallow and cover everything. As Marte gets older, you could put him in a corner. Will Khalil Lee be your future center fielder? Or you know what? You have four years, three years essentially, to find a younger center fielder. Maybe that is Nimmo down the line. Maybe Starling Marte could be your center fielder this year and next year, but then in years three and four, you can move Brandon Nimmo back to center field. This definitely will soften losing Michael Conforto. I, I said once they got more can, I don't think Conforto is coming back. I mean, this is like completely obvious that Michael Conforto is not coming back. And now everyone's like, oh, get bias back, get bias back. You know what? With the moves the Mets are making right now, I don't really think they need to bring back Javier Bias. If you saw the report today, he's looking for a six-year, $200 million deal. I know this year and next year and probably the year after that, Javier Bias, he could do a lot of good things. He could play really well. I'm one of the biggest Javier Bias fans you will ever see. When the Mets first acquired Bias and Bias was struggling, everyone was booing him, ready to get rid of him. I I stood up for the guy. I defended the guy. And now all of a sudden, everybody loves Baez. In year five and year six, when Javi Baez loses the athleticism, because most of his game is predicated on his athleticism, he's not going to be an effective player. And those strikeouts are going to be even worse. And he's not going to make up for in other areas like the way he does now. As I said before, it's a quantity over quality approach. If you want the Mets to bring back Javier Baez for $200 million and give Marcus Stroman another $150 million and just keep the same exact team you had last year, you're going to go nowhere. You're going to have the same exact team and same exact results as 2021. So this is what the Mets have to do. They have to get a bunch of new guys. And Marcus Stroman now tweeted tonight that it looks like the Mets don't want to bring me back. They're interested in other starting pitchers. And you know what? With the way Marcus Stroman is on social media and the asking price he has, I can't blame them. If the Mets want to get Kevin Gosman instead, I'm perfectly okay with that. I'm willing to let Stroman go. Give me Kevin Gosman. And you know what? Now that the Mets have made all these acquisitions for position players, they could pull off a trade for Luis Castillo or Sonny Gray or another starting pitcher that's out there. I mean, how could the Cincinnati Reds say no to a package that includes a McNeil and a J.D. Davis or a Dominic Smith plus, I don't know, Mark Vientos? The Mets could do a lot of different things. And what I love also is that they still 
have not signed a player that received a qualifying offer, which means they are keeping that 14th pick in the draft. And if Conforto walks, that's another draft pick. So it looks like the New York Mets are going to get better in the short term with the signs they made tonight of Canna, Escobar, and Marte. But they're also going to be better in the long term with having these draft picks and building up that farm system that needs a lot of help. And they added a top 10 prospect in Nick Plummer the other day. And even though that's a bit of an indictment on how bad 8 through 10 on the Mets farm system is, Still, it's something that they're focusing on. They're not just looking at the short term, and they're not just looking at the long term. They're looking at a combination of both, which is exactly what you want to see from this team. And as I said in the other videos, the good news is the Mets are not done. They are going to get a pitcher probably multiple pitchers. And I wouldn't be surprised if by the time the weekend is over, Kevin Gosman is a New York Met. It is clear that the New York Mets are now showing a point of emphasis, knowing that that deadline is coming up December 1st, December 2nd. With that lockout, they want to get as many guys as they can so they have less questions later on. It's just good to know that Billy Epler is being very active and making moves happen and spending money, not waiting until the very last second in Sandy Olsen and trying to get the best pennies for it and risk losing the guy to other players, not trying to outbid other teams. Let's be honest. While Billy Uppers making all these moves, Sandy also is probably sleeping right now. And let's be frank about it. I like Sandy as a guy. He's a, he's a great man. But he's probably sleeping right now. So that's why I got to have Billy Epler to be awake and to be able to catch everyone else sleeping and getting a really nice player like Starling Marte. Now, in order for the Mets to get the full effect of Starling Marte, when he does get on base, they have to actually send the guy. Because one of my biggest critiques of Luis Rojas was that the Mets had players with speed, like Brandon Nemo, like Francisco Lindor, like Javier Baez when they acquired him, and they very rarely sent them. Starling Marte led the league of stolen bases, and he did most of it in Oakland. He was able to lead the league of stolen bases by getting a bunch of stolen bases in a short amount of time and being efficient. It's not like he ran a bunch and got thrown out a bunch and stole a bunch. No, he had a really good percentage when he was running. So I really hope that the next manager the Mets get, hopefully it's not Brad Ausmus or Buck Showalter, is an aggressive manager that is willing to send Starling Marte and get the most out of him and really just get the best bang for your buck. And no, I do not mean Buck Showalter. But definitely it's exciting because like I said, I know the Mets are going to do some other stuff. They also need to work on the bullpen now that Aaron Loop left as well. And we know that they try to keep Steve Matt. So the Mets are going to get a starting pitcher. Don't worry. And I and still, Starling Marte is not their biggest move. They're going to make an even bigger move. So I don't want to hear Mets are being mediocre, Mets are being cheap. Again, you don't want to just give Baez a crazy contract, Stroman a crazy contract, and have the same exact team. So give them a chance. There is more work to be done. They are not done, at least I hope. Maybe there's a fourth video. I mean, at this rate, you never know. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this third one. If you watched all of them, you're awesome. If you haven't, you could watch them. That would be pretty nice. But until the next one, which probably will be this weekend, be safe, be smart, be healthy. Let's go, Mets. Keep it going.